How's it going, everyone? Maryland here, and that's right, it's time for more of Maryland's Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Adventure! Last time, I, well, I evolved Floaty into a Gliscor, which is really cool. But I also went underground and kind of saw some new Pokemon and got some things, but overall, it was not as successful as an adventure as I wanted it to be. Oh well, that's fine. Anyway, today I'm going to be solving some mysteries of the Sinnoh region. So I hope you're ready for a spooky time because we're going to go ghost hunting. Oh yeah, that's right. That's one such mystery. Uh, so this is something you could actually access after getting cut, really. So that's kind of neat. Although Gardenia doesn't appear here until I think after you've beaten the game and gotten the National Pokedex, but maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, she's here. Haya, were you intrigued by the rumors going around too? You know, people have been talking about the ghost Pokemon of the old Chateau. I've been hearing rumors about Sinister Shadows too. I should check it out myself, but going in there is, well, you know, being that I'm a gym leader, I'm always busy. So. You know, since I'm so busy, I can't go in. It's not because I'm so scared. So good luck with your investigation. Oh yeah, all right. So I recommend going here at night. That means after 8 p.m. or before 4 a.m. Because otherwise you can still visit this place, but you're not gonna be able to find the cool Pokemon in here. And again, you can visit this place earlier on, it's just you can't find said cool Pokemon. So, you know, if you're watching the whole thing and haven't gotten the game yet, no, you can go here, like, way earlier. So there's an ether off in this corner here, and then inside the house, it is very spooky. The old chateau. Hmm. That music, though. Oh, man. So this bottom floor here, has a really big dining room. Oh man, that place is huge. So empty trash. Empty trash there as well. There's an antidote here, you know. Sure, why not? Who would throw that away? What does this say? What? <laughs> it says the forbidden words. Ghastly won't let me read it. Yeah, you'll find a lot of ghastly here. So that's uh Interesting if you want ghastly. Also, why are the lights shining? I'm playing this at about midnight, so I don't know why they would be shining. Uh, where is... Where are my quick balls? There they are. Guess I haven't caught ghastly yet, so might as well. Cool. Got it in the critical capture. That's always nice. All right, I wonder... Yeah, that's not really gonna help that much. So, this upcoming Pokemon I keep teasing is gonna be a little... a little tricky for me to catch. <laughs> for a few reasons, but... yeah. So, over here, I don't think there's actually anything. I think it's just kinda like... I don't know. I don't know, we'll check this place out later because you know there might be a ghost in there still so go up the stairs and then you'll find in the room on the left there's an old gateau not to be confused with the old chateau and that is just an item that heals your pokemon status conditions kind of like the lava cookie doesn't have any other use but i don't think you can get more of those so you know you might want to hold on to it because otherwise well, you probably won't have another one. I mean, it doesn't really matter. If you like collecting items, maybe it does. So there's like some books over here, I guess. <laughs> kind of creepy, but all right, sure. All right, well, not much to see there. So let's go in this room over here. Also, I have to point out, you know what? Whenever I'm shopping for art for my, you know, walls, I always go with the exact same art piece on both sides of, you know, a door. <laughs> because of course, why not? That's so decoratively stylish. Oh man. All right, so in the far left, there is a dread plate here in this kind of storage room, I guess. 
And it says, two beings of time and space set free from the original one. Very cool. So, oh yeah, there's another encounter here. All right, well, realistically, I should just use the rebel. I know in the original Diamond and Pearl, it was kind of cool because you could find Haunter or Gengar. Yeah, Wild Gengar. If you had a Game Boy Advance cartridge in your GBA slot, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna save this room for just a moment. I'll be right back there. There's a TV that's kinda on the fritz. Hmm, I wonder why that could be. So there's binders over here. Looks like someone left their Pokemon cards. Whoa, wait a second. Wait a second. What's going on with this? Look at that painting over there. Dude, that guy's eyes are red. What the heck? All right, we gotta go check that out. What was that? Did you hear that? That was creepy. Oh, what? What the heck? I've never heard these voices before. What the? What? Okay, that is creepy. Oh man, okay. That's definitely rather odd. Anyway, all the way to the right here, there is TM90 Substitute, which I believe you can just buy if you want, so it's not really that interesting. But, you know, you can get it fairly early on. Like, it, it's an interesting move. It's tricky to pull off, but sometimes you can. And in those cases, it's great, but you really need to know what you're doing. All right, so anyway, let's get on into this room right here with the TV. Now, this is very important to mention. You need to visit, and again, I've done it before. You need to visit here between 8 p.m. and 4 a.m., and you need to have obtained the national decks. In Platinum, you didn't need the national decks. That was not something required there, but you did need the national decks in Diamond and Pearl. So, you know, if you're only familiar with playing Platinum, let's say, yeah, this might be like, wait, what? Why do I have to wait? All right, so anyway, you might want to save your game just in case, although what I'm about to fight will respawn after a, uh, after a day. So, inside the TV, there appears to be a Pokemon. The Pokemon looks like it could come out. Would you like to thump the TV? Yes. <laughs> you thump the TV set. Well, that's cool. There's a cutscene. Well, kind of. Oh, snap! It's a legendary Pokemon! Because it's playing the legendary theme, of course. Which actually sounds really cool. Alright, so, roll time! It's just this little level 15 thing, just kinda hanging out. It's an electric ghost type, and it has levity. So, yeah. Because it's part ghost, I can't use false swipe on it. I can't use super fang on it. You can just toss a quick ball. It's not super hard to catch or anything. If you miss with that, you can just, like, reset and try again. But, yeah. I caught it, so that's cool. Alright, I gotta give it the most obvious name ever. I just spelled its name backwards. I just, yeah, motor. Yep, there we go. All right, so I got me motor. Oh, slings on the ground. The secret key. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Now I'm curious about something. Yeah, let's use another repel here. Yeah, it just turned to midnight, <laughs> so I was wondering if I could fight it again, if that would count as, like, the time rolling over. So, the secret key, I'm trying to remember now. This is... has to be used as location. I... don't remember where that is, actually. I think that's what lets you change its form, or get somewhere that does. I just don't remember off the top of my head where that is, because that wasn't in Diamond and Pearl. I gotta go back and try again. <laughs> it's just like, 
It's compelling me. All right, no, it, it's not. I probably just missed it. There's a chance I might have been able to if I left or something. All right, so I'm still curious about that, though. Like, that's just creepy, those eyes. Like, there was definitely a voice that I heard when I was over there. It was just when I was walking. Wait, what? Oh, there. So it's just if I walk up to it, it plays that. Oh, that's so creepy. Huh. Alright, well, you know, that's definitely odd, but I feel like I need to explore more, because there's still some mysteries lurking in this place. Oh, what the heck? Oh man, I hear more of those voices! Who's that girl over there? Alright, that was not me. There's a ghost in here! That's gotta be it. That's the only explanation. Because I already caught Rotom. It can't be anything else, right? Alright, well... Let's give one more look in here, just in case. I wanna see where that girl went. Whoa, what the heck? That was weird. I think that was just like a <laughs> visual glitch or something. But man, whenever you get those while you're like hunting for ghosts, that is like the scariest thing. Yeah, I don't really see anything here. Well, that's fine. Looks like, uh, looks like the mystery has been solved. It's probably just a ghost. Nothing to worry about. All right, cool. Let's get out of here. Uh, no, I don't need to use a repel because I'm done with this place. It is too spooky for me. But you know what? I'm not done with mysteries. I know this isn't going to be like a super long episode or anything, but I do still have another interesting mystery. It isn't really a mystery. It's just kind of one of those cool things in, uh, in Sinnoh. So let me go ahead and do that, and then I'll see if I can find where that secret key leads me. All right, you know what? Since I was in the neighborhood, before checking out this final mystery, I want to solve this key mystery. So, turns out, this key sounds like it's able to unlock something inside of here. The Galactic Eterna building. All right, well, it was most certainly not upstairs like I would have expected it to be. Where would it be? Would it be in here? Okay. Yeah! Sure! Of course there was a secret door back there! Yeah, alright, I totally thought- You see, I was trying to remember, it's like, where did I see a door? But, apparently, just like the old Team Rocket trick, yeah, there's a, a secret place back here. Oh, that's really cool. Look at all these appliances. There's a mysterious notebook here. Its age is impossible to tell. It was by pure chance that I obtained information about the Pokemon Rotom. Remarkably, Rotom is able to merge with special motors. Rotom can thereby enter various home appliances and change its form. I have confirmed that Rotom changes its types and the moves it can learn by reflecting the characteristics of any home appliance it enters. This Pokemon requires exhaustive observation and analysis. To ensure I get all the credit, my Rotom research must be kept secret. They will come to recognize me as the scientific genius Char. <laughs> uh, the rest of the notebook is blank. He didn't even finish writing his name. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's not actually Char. It's not Charmander, not Charizard. In fact, it's not even pronounced Char. It's Karen, like the moon of Pluto, I think it is. So yeah, I mean, I think that's from, I wanna say Roman mythology. But, yeah, that's kind of in the theme, so... Yeah, but he wasn't in uh, Diamond and Pearl, just Platinum. Anyway, there are all of these machines here. Isn't that interesting? So there's a refrigerator, there's all that stuff. So, if I have Rotom, or my, <laughs> my motor with me, where did my Rotom go? My Rotom... There it is. Okay, let's go ahead and move you into the party for right now. I'm going to get rid of Doorbell for a moment. Okay, so if I wanted to change you into one of these different forms... Oh, Rotom appears as if it wants to go in the motor! Yeah, go ahead and enter that motor. <laughs> motor, enter the motor! Motor is trying to learn overheat. 
Yeah, so this is Heat Rotom, and whenever you change Rotom's form, it will learn a special move exclusive to that form. So in this case, it's going to get overheat. Now the stats you see on the right, those are not actually the stats that it will have after it's changed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of charge for right now. That should be fine. And then if you change out of that form, you lose access to that move. So it looks like I get the Rotom catalog. Well, that's pretty cool. Microwave oven has been added to the Rotom catalog. Oh, what are you doing here? Oh, imagine finding you here. I could say the same. What are you doing here? You must be eager to fill your Pokedex. Pokedex will be searching even here. What am I doing? I visit a professor I know in Eterna every so often. He tells me intriguing rumors of rare Pokemon sightings and such. A Pokemon that slips into electric appliances, you say? Hmm, that is somewhat off from what I've heard about it. Hmm, this is what I've heard. Long ago, there was a Pokemon that merged with a toy robot. Should that Pokemon be recognized as a new species or not? Debates over the issue were about to start when they were rendered moot. The very topic of discussion, the Pokemon-infused robot, disappeared. Hmm, that's kind of weird. Yeah, alright. So I guess I can just grab these things. Maybe I have to have Rotom go inside of all of them first. So now I get the rotary fan. And as a result, it didn't actually say it, but I did lose access to that special move. So now I have Air Slash instead. And on top of that, the type of Rotom changes, as well as its stats. It does get better stats. Base form Rotom is not very good for its stats, but its, uh, its appliance forms are actually pretty strong. That You've seen them a lot in competitive battles if you've watched any. But yeah, so this is Electric Flying. The Heat Rotom, and this is Fan Rotom. Heat Rotom is Electric Fire, and it's also pretty darn good. This thing gets Air Slash, and it's kind of redundant to have both Levitate and be a flying type, but you know what, whatever. It at least gets Air Slash, which is pretty cool. So let's have you enter the fridge. So that turns it into uh, Frost Rotom, which is a ice type, electric ice type now and it gets access to Blizzard, which is pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty cool. And here's the one everyone's talking about. It's the washing machine. That's right, it's a washing machine. So now your Rotom can become a washing machine of its very own electric water type, fantastic typing too, especially with Levitate. This thing is probably the best of the forms. It gets Hydro Pump, which is really nice. A little inaccurate, but, you know, still pretty nice. You can put the wide lens on it to bump it up to 88%. And lastly, it's the Lawn Mower. Yeah! Motor got inside the motor! Lawn Mower. Cool. And this is, you guessed it, Electric Grass type. This is its mow form. And it has Leaf Storm, which can be kind of risky because it lowers its special attack by two stages. And this thing is really about special attack, so yeah. But after you've gotten all of those forms there, looks like you can use this Rotom catalog on your Rotom, and you can just choose which form you want it to be in. And if you choose Light Bulb, that just changes it to its default form, which is kind of neat. And it does end up forgetting whichever move it uh, it had in its special form. So I guess I'll just change it back to microwave oven because I could go for a bagel or something. A nice toasted bagel or a toasted English muffin. Mmm, that'd be good. <laughs> right? Couldn't I put that in there? Could you cook me some, uh, some snacks, buddy? That'd be great. Yeah, all right. So we got motor the Rotom and this secret area. Yeah, I was thinking there's a door upstairs. I went up there. It's like, no, there's no door. Well, where's the door? And yes, I totally looked it up online. <laughs> but, you know, where else would there be a door? That's such a tease. Like, you really have to look online. Why would you go back to this building? Maybe there's something that tells you. I don't know. It didn't really seem like it, though. All right, so final mystery here. Hopefully this is working because it's a very special date. Right now, when I'm recording at least, it'll have long since passed by the time you're actually watching this, but it's a nice little Easter egg tribute here. This is in Snowpoint City, 
And this only occurs on January 12th. When your uh, switch clock is set to January 12th, it will have this special kind of sparkling in the air in Snowpoint City. And this is actually called Diamond Dust. It's really cool. It's a very cool phenomenon. I actually, I saw it once and it was beautiful because it was like a clear, well, it was nighttime, so it was a clear sky. There wasn't like any clouds or anything, but there was just all this beautiful glittering in the air, like around me outside. It was one of the most enchanting things I'd ever seen. It was really, really cool. So this is in honor of Junichi Masuda's birthday, which is, of course, January 12th. And, you know, he's been the you know director on so many different Pokemon games. He's been, you know, the composer. He, he's absolutely fantastic. So it's cool. And this has actually been a tradition, I think, even since the original Diamond and Pearl. I think that's when it was first added, which is really cool. So just one of those little Easter eggs I was thinking, hey, you know what? It's actually that date when I'm recording this, so I might as well show it. Now this mystery has an answer. Rotom, on the other hand, the ghosts over there, I don't know, that's pretty spooky. But yeah, anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode. Just some lighthearted stuff after that two hour grind underground. I just needed something to relax with. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you on the next episode of Maryland's Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Adventure. See you next time, everyone.